now I'd like to turn it over to Secretary Sutters. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, Michael, thank you for joining us today. Good afternoon, everyone. Our changes to the phase two priority groups, as the Governor and Lieutenant Governor have indicated, protect vulnerable populations and ensure the equitable distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. As you've heard, starting next Monday, individuals age 75 or older are eligible to receive the vaccine. Later in February, individuals age 65 or older and individuals with two plus comorbidities will also be eligible to receive the vaccine. Depending on the vaccine supply, of course, from the federal government. There are many people in phase one who have waited to get the vaccine and they remain eligible to book an appointment at one of our vaccine sites. Because we moved individuals age 65 and older into part, into part two of phase two, we're no longer specifically calling out on the website public and private low income and affordable senior housing. They obviously remain eligible. An update on congregate care facilities. Congregate care vaccinations have been steady over the last couple of weeks. Unlike some states, we have a strong, diverse, and dispersed network of community providers serving many of our most vulnerable residents. There are 94,000 individuals working or residing in some of these congregate care settings across 3,500 specific locations and 400 providers. These include group homes, residential treatment programs, individual and family homeless shelters, domestic violence shelters, veteran shelters, and special education residential education programs assisted living residences and rest homes, to name but some. These programs have different clinical capacity, partnerships, and serve residents with different needs, requiring the employment of a range of strategies in terms of vaccination plans. The clinics began on a rolling basis starting on January 11th. To date, 80% of our congregate care providers self-report that vaccination clinics have commenced at more than 850 distinct locations. There's a lot of logistical planning. We work actively and closely with each provider to ensure that each site can implement vaccination administration as quickly and safely as possible. Utilizing the federal pharmacy program, supporting on-site vaccination administration, leveraging existing clinical and pharmacy partnerships, and encouraging the use of our Massachusetts, our mass vaccination sites. As we work to vaccinate phase one priority groups, our commitment to preserving our health care capacity, protection of some of our most vulnerable residents, and equity are at the forefront of the planning. Communities of color and at-risk populations are prioritized to maximize life preservation and to prevent serious complications from COVID-related illnesses. The Commonwealth's COVID-19 vaccination distribution plan was developed based on recommendations from the CDC and our COVID-19 vaccine advisory group. As we continue to allocate constrained supply of vaccine, in addition to mass vaccination sites, our priority is to ensure that the lens of equity is reflected in the allocation and distribution. In addition to collaborating with the city in the opening of the Reggie Lewis Center, going forward, it is our expectation that retail pharmacy locations must prioritize Chelsea, Revere, Mattapan, Dorchester, Roxbury, and municipal municipalities outside of Boston with communities disproportionately impact, impacted by COVID. Our overall commitment is to create vaccination sites that achieve scale, geography, equity, and diversity across our state. Phase one has prioritized employees and other groups who've been historically marginalized or have significant representation from communities of color that other states did not prioritize, including individuals who are homeless, health aides, home health aides, personal care attendants, and the like. Michael Curry, president of the League of Community Health Centers, will have more to say about equity of the vaccine shortly. And finally, some changes we've made. Last week, we made two important adjustments in order to increase the rate of safely administered vaccines in the state. As the governor said, 
We have distributed 600 and so we have distributed 651,875 doses of COVID vaccine to providers in Massachusetts, including both first and second doses. It represents more than 98 percent of what we have received directly from the federal government. Another 224,250 doses have been allocated to the federal pharmacy program. Each Friday and Sunday, when the Department of Public Health receives the vaccine allocation from the federal government, the department pushes our weekly allocation out to the provider community. To date, our distribution has largely gone to hospital health care systems, with smaller amounts to local boards of health, corrections, congregate care, and the like. Last week, we made it crystal clear that providers have 10 days from the receipt of the vaccine to administration. All hospitals were contacted last week to re review their existing inventory and their administration plans. We, act we are actively monitoring their scheduled clinics and the vaccine utilization. This week, hospital systems did not receive additional vaccine inventory. They need to utilize what they have in hand. And if we must, we will redistribute these fragile vaccines to other providers. The second change involves the federal pharmacy program. The federal government required the allocation of 50 percent of our first doses in order to launch the program for skilled nursing homes and congregate care. These programs have been much slower to ramp than initially anticipated. As of January 19th, 300,000 doses had been allocated to the federal pharmacy program and only 80,000 doses had been administered. Last week, after back and forth with the federal government, we received permission to pull back doses and halt further vaccine allocation into the federal program in order for the federal program to use what they have in hand. So, as of today, we have halted further allocation to the federal pharmacy program until the existing supply is well depleted. We have redirected 17,500 doses a week for the next several weeks from that pharmacy program, from the federal pharmacy program to CVS and Walgreens retail pharmacy. And we pulled back 20,000 doses from the federal pharmacy program to distribute doses directly to Massachusetts providers. Let me be clear, CVS and Walgreens have been good partners during this process. We expect them to fully utilize their existing supply in the next few weeks, and at that point, we will then resume allocating vaccine to the federal program. In the coming weeks, as CVS and Walgreens work their way through this supply, and as hospitals work through their supply, our ratio of doses administered compared to doses distributed will improve. And with that, it's a privilege to turn the podium, the podium over to Michael Curry, who's the president and CEO of the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers. Thank you, Governor, uh, Lieutenant Governor Polito, and uh, my friend, Secretary Sutters. Uh, I am Michael Curry, President and CEO of the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers. Uh, our 52 members serve on the front lines in our state's most vulnerable communities, providing primary care and preventive care to lower income patients and communities of color across Massachusetts. I thought I'd start today with where I originally intended ending, uh, which is to the hesitancy that exists in communities of color about this vaccine. I think of the many things that we'll talk about over the days and weeks and months ahead is that there is a reluctance in the communities where I was born and raised in Roxbury about this vaccine. And I want to urge people to trust the science, to get the facts, to not trust the misinformation that they get on social media and that they hear from, in many cases, their home countries, their home communities, and to know the facts about this vaccine. Because when it's their turn, when it's our turn, when it's my mother's turn as a 76-year-old woman with two-plus comorbidities, when it's her turn in, time, in line, I want her to trust the science and listen to her primary care provider. I've had the honor and privilege of serving on the Commonwealth's COVID-19 Vaccine Advisory Group and can say with great certainty that equity is and will continue to be 
front and center in the state's carefully considered rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine. We were very clear and quick to acknowledge that the virus has not affected everyone equally. We know that our black and brown communities have higher rates of infections, hospitalizations, and deaths from the virus. Too often, up to three times higher rates in black and indigenous communities of color across the country and here in Massachusetts. With that stark data in front of us, we understood that an equity lens needed to be applied at every stage of the rollout. As Secretary Sutters often says, in the first phrase, we knew it was imperative to start with our health care workers for two reasons. We needed to ensure their continuing ability to manage this pandemic. And because many of those who work on the front line in health care roles as personal care attendants, medical assistants, and home health aides are also people of color. That is also the case for other populations prioritized in this phase, phase one. Individuals experiencing homelessness and living in congregate care settings, including the incarcerated. I want to understate that. As Secretary Sutters pointed out, we did something different than much of the rest of the country. Our prisons, our jails are overpopulated with too many people of color. And that's an ongoing issue in this racial reckoning that we're trying to address is the overrepresentation of black and brown people in our prisons, but we know that they're at risk. And too far often our black and brown and Latinx communities are being impacted, and we need to take that in consideration. In phase two, we focus on seniors and individuals with two or more comor comorbidities, with additional allocation for those communities with higher prevalence of the disease um, and social vulnerability. We know from looking at the data that the cases of COVID-19 infections for black and Latinx individuals are worsened by underlying conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, and asthma, all related to an historic lack of access to care and structural racism. For example, 42% of black men and 43% of black women suffer from hypertension, compared to 31% of white men and 27% of white women. For diagnosed diabetes, Hispanic men are at the highest rate at 14 percent, followed by black women at 12 percent. 12 percent of Hispanic women develop diabetes. The, that number is 11 percent for black men. Whites have the lowest rate for developing diabetes across all groups. This pandemic has heightened our consciousness about the underlying disparities born out of these inequities. And I've described this as our national Katrina. In phase two and phase three, when the vaccine becomes available to the public, there have been significant investments made to reach black, Latinx, and many other immigrant populations who may be in need of more information to make empowered decisions about getting vaccinated. Campaigns by the Department of Public Health and my organization, the Massachusetts League of Community Health Centers, will, with messaging that addresses their questions and concerns around social media platforms, through virtual town halls and community events at churches and socially distanced settings that allow for listening and talking about people's fears, as well as their goals for health and safety and hopes about life post-pandemic. That will include using doctors who, as we know from the state and national polls and studies, are our most trusted source of information about the vaccine, and relying on a multitude of voices and languages in languages to ensure that information is accessible for populations. Overlaying all of this is a commitment by the governor and the secretary to open up vaccination sites in Chelsea and East Boston and Revere with the hope that our community health center member, East Boston Health Center, will be there and to serve those communities. Health centers historically have been primary vaccinators in the communities that they serve and have played a frontline role in responding to COVID-19. Health centers are meeting with our community partners and continuing to plan for this next phase of patient vaccinations in communities like Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan, and other hard-hit communities outside of Boston. Lastly, we encourage those who are concerned about quality and equity and access to continue asking the critical questions. And we have a responsibility, both as providers and government, to answer those questions and to adjust where we can to those needs and concerns as they're expressed. Lastly, I'll end where I started. As we roll out this vaccine to large populations, it is critically important 
that everyone lend their voice to the truth about this vaccine, the efficacy and safety. So we at the Mass League, the 52 community health centers serving over a million patients, want to partner with you in that rollout of this message that this is about saving lives. And we thank the governor, the lieutenant governor, the secretary for including this in the, us in this effort uh, to get back to normal in the communities where we serve and across the country. So thank you.